grace, power, ministry, and love. Incline your ears to wisdom and your hearts to understanding. Receive the word of God according to knowledge. Welcome to preach. To preach. To preach. Be a voice, not an echo. Join Minister Chantrell for today's message. Hello, and thank you for joining me today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. I'm going to begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for life, love, and liberty this day. I want to thank you for waking me this day, first and foremost, thanking you for your mercy that is new to me this day, thanking you for your grace that is sufficient and your power that worketh in me, Father, thanking you for your Holy Spirit that allows me to rightly divide your word of truth and love. Father, I surrender my heart this day, Father, to your will and your ways, Father, your words and not my own. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay my flesh down at the feet of the Spirit, Father, that I may submit to what the word would have me teach this day. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the hearts of the listeners, Father, that they will be cultivated and receptive, Father. I come against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness and imps of the enemy that would hinder, delay, distort, detour those who would hear your word. Father, I cast down the spirit of mockers, Father, in the name of Jesus. I cast them down right now by the power of the blood. Father, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your power. I thank you that you have qualified me and made me fit to be a minister and a disciple of the gospel of grace father i thank you that i move forth in the spirit and in great boldness father by your spirit and with the faith of jesus christ father i thank you that i am strong in the lord and the power of his might father i thank you that no weapon formed against me this day will prosper and every tongue that rises against me in judgment i shall condemn father by your word and by your power and by the truth of your word father in the name of jesus i pray blessing upon the listeners of this word Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that they will receive incorruptible seed that will flourish into much fruit, Father, good fruit of the word. In the name of Jesus, Father God, I thank you once again, and I pray. Amen. Today's message, as always, just simply studying, um, the Lord gave me this message, and it was really intent on my heart. Uh, I've said this before that each of us have a way he deals with each of us in our own way and that's our relationship with him it's the same way my songs and writings and poems come when it begins to flow he speaks to my heart and almost effortlessly the scriptures come and I dissect it the way the spirit leads and guides me um, on this message today and I believe it's a powerful message because it, we, we time is short and, and not only time is short of the Lord coming back judgment the things are about to change her really quick and my heart breaks because some people are so oblivious to it and that's why those of us in Christ have to stand in the gap and stand strong we have got to know who we are we have got to stop the infighting we have got to stop the divide and conquer that the enemy is doing because while we're arguing people are going to be dying around us uh, the Lord has shown me things in dreams previously you know repeatedly a lot have come to pass some have not yet and it was to destruction of property. But in my spirit, I know that the things that are coming are going to be to great loss of life. We can't, we, we can't afford to be debating and striving and distracted from our ministry. The message today that he gave me um, is going to all be in Titus 1. The unruly, vain talking, deceiving teachers whose mouths must be stopped. And this word teachers, whether you're a minister or pastor, or a, a Christian like me who is a minister, which just means messenger of God. You have got to sit still until the Lord gives you message. Be led by the Spirit to rightly divide. Stop taking people backwards because we are be people are being stumbling blocks. Time is too short for you to be a stumbling block and cause someone to fall that may be on their way running back to Christ. I'm going to go right into Scripture first, Start starting with Titus verse 1, I mean chapter 1, verse 10 through 11. For there are many unruly, vain talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped, who subvert whole houses, teaching things they ought not to teach for filthy lucre's sake. Subverting whole houses. And this word house is not only your close family. This It's not just your immediate family. It's your whole, it's generations. And it can be the house you know, it could be a group of cousins, uncles, and people who are just Christians and brothers and sisters who are together. That's your house. That is your house. They subvert whole houses. 
And the Lord had me to dissect this word subvert. Because you got to understand. The definition of subvert. First verb form means to destroy completely. The second verb form definition. To cause the downfall of or of rulers. Which are just people in authority. The third ver verb form. Corrupt morally to corrupt morally or by intemperance or sensuality seduction flattering words smooth lips compliments deceptive speech eloquent speech orators and then these two words in this last part of this definition he had me break down to corrupt morally by intemperance or sensuality definition of intemperance immoderate to be indulgent of bodily appetites Anything you want to do in the flesh. If it feels good, do it. That's the message that the world sends today. If it feels good, do it. If y'all both agree, do it. Even in marriage, you can't just do what you want. Bringing in porn and third parties and weird freaky rituals. But let me get on. I'm not going to get off on that. And the word sensual definition. Desire for sensual pleasures. To hinder normal operations. To just hinder a normal flow of things. So to these people who mouths must be stopped, subvert whole houses, especially they of the circumcision. I'm going to go down and I'm going to read Galatians verse 5, 1, yeah, chapter 5, verse 1 through 5. They are fallen from grace. Number five, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit, profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised, that if he is a debtor to the he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace. For we, through the Spirit, for we through the Spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. Righteousness by faith. The Lord tells us that our righteousness is of Him. And there's this constant mixture of the law. And people are imposing it on other people. This circumcision, when you hear that word, they're speaking about those who teach the law. That you have to do these. If you're guilty of one, you're guilty of all. Which means you don't have to murder nobody. But if you lie... You're guilty of all of it. You're just as guilty as the person that murdered. And I know people don't want to hear that. He does not put a difference between sin and that way. But you have got to understand, we are not under law anymore. The scripture tells us that the, the two, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I'm going to go back down. I'm going to say this. But later on, you're going to, I'm going to give you the scripture in which I speak. Where Jesus gave, gave us two commandments. To love the Lord God with all our heart, mind, soul, and strength. And to love our neighbor as ourselves. On these two law commandments hang all the law and the prophets. I'm going to break that down in layman's turn. Jesus fulfilled the law perfectly. Literally fulfilled every act. And he was tempted in every way like we were. And he fulfilled it completely. So that he... The new covenant, the only two laws he gave us, two commandments he gave us, is to love the Lord God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And on these hang all the law of prophets, which means he literally filled the law. He gave us a new one because he took it on force because no flesh could do it. Nobody could do it but Jesus. That's why we needed a Savior. So if you love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and you love your neighbor as yourself, on these hang all the law of the prophet, which means you fulfill all the law. By doing those two things. He literally did it. And then he gave you two that you should be able to do. Because not only that. He gave you the power and the faith and the grace to do it. To love that way. And how do, I've, I've said this before in other messages. How do we love the Lord God with all our heart, mind, soul and strength? By coming to him for everything. By trusting him for everything. By relying on him for everything. By acknowledging him in all our ways that he directs our steps. And then when he directs our steps, obey him. That's how we love the Lord God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. And we love our neighbor as ourself by the grace and by the examples the Lord has set forth for us to be patient, long-suffering, general, easy to entreat. You know, the wisdom, brotherly love and kindness to feed those who are in need, to help people, to pray for people. And to forgive. Hold no grudges. 
For those who are in the law have fallen from grace, and many are teaching this, and they're causing people to stumble. The only thing we have left is grace. He said, those who are in the law, you have fallen from grace. And grace is all we have. Once Jesus has come, the law is obsolete. Well, I'm not going to say the it's obsolete to us because it's been fulfilled through him. There's no such thing. As, I don't like when people say the old covenant and the new covenant. I mean, shall I say the old commandments and the new commandments. It's the Old Testament and the New Testament. He fulfilled the law literally, and he gave us two new commandments, which is just to love that way. And if we do those things, it's as good as if we did all fulfilling of the law in the natural ourselves. I'm trying to explain this the best way I can so that you can understand. When he says on these two things hang all, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets, which means if you do these two things, it's as if you fulfilled the law right along with Jesus. Step by step, every bit of it. We are in Christ. We are not separate from him. These people whose mouths must be stopped, they place salvation back on works. It's people that fall, they blame it on how they acted that they are or if they did something wrong. And I've said this before and I don't want to get off because I want to stay on course. That we are only seen through the spotless sacrifice, the blemishless sacrifice of Jesus Christ. When you fall and you sin, yeah, you get up and repent because that's what you do as a Christian. But don't think that's why your salvation stayed. Once you have come to Christ, you are his, period. He does not observe sin in you. I know that's hard for people to see, and, and I don't want to, you know, get this message too long because I'm, I'm going somewhere with this, but that's a whole other message. If you want to hear that in entirety, I've got grace messages and other that where I dissect that. Just like they brought the lamb for sacrifice when they had to sacrifice to be covered, it had to be a spotless lamb without blemish, and if that lamb was spotless without blemish, then they were accepted. And our lamb is Jesus Christ. He does not observe. And when they had sacrificed these lambs, the Lord said, Behold, I have not observed iniquity in Jacob, which means Israel. He can't even see your sin. You you sitting up thinking about it, and the Lord didn't even see it because he only see you in Christ. You have got to understand that. Let me move forth. Um, what the Lord tells us to do to these people, and this is the part I know people are going to struggle with because they get confused at what love is. You got to be all timid and nice all the time. That's 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 not truth. Rebuke them sharply. Titus 1, verses 12 through 14. One of themselves, even a prophet of their own, said that the centurions always are liars, evil beasts, and slow bellies. Yeah, boy, that's a whole other message there. This witness is true. Wherefore, rebuke them sharply. Rebuke them sharply. Why? That they may be sound in the faith not giving heed to Jewish fables, because that's what it is, Jewish fables, and commandments of men that turn from truth. Now, we're going to break this down because this is what the Lord had me do so you can understand. Some may not need this, but some do. So if you more developed in this, listen anyway, because you can always be edified by being fed, because I listen to many powerful teachers, and because we need to be poured into as well. That he had me break down rebuke. Because too many people, oh God, Christians are so timid. You can post something on Facebook. You can post it on Twitter. And as long as it's positive, glory to God and the blessing of the Lord, everybody will thumbs up and agree. Which is good. Glory to God, we have a blessed Savior. But when you're putting forth things in this world that the Bible tells us to contend against, homosexual marriages, all these different perverse things they're putting, and then the fact that they're, they're thinking about printing Bibles where they remove the Son of God and the Father out because it offends Muslims, you get crickets. You post that, nobody has anything to say. And I promise you that your omission is in agreement with it. You cannot be indifferent. To be indifferent means you just neutral in the middle. You know what the Lord said about people who are neutral? You are lukewarm. He said, I will spew you out of my mouth. He said, I would rather for you to be hot are cold. He'd rather for you just to go on the other way and, and are either one way or the other way than to be warm in the middle. To be indifferent is to be lukewarm. And boy, that's a whole nother message too. He said, I will spew you out of my mouth. And when you refuse to speak against things you know are contrary to God because you're going to get beat up or attacked, omission, by your silence, you have spoken very loudly. And I want you to take that to the bank. Thus says the Lord, you have spoken loud by your silence. The Bible tells us to contend for the faith. You boldly speak against those things that are contrary to God. It doesn't mean you hate them. 
But you cannot lie against the truth. Let me go down because I'm getting tangent and a, and a little bit angry, but we're going to deal with that because of what the Bible tells us about the anger. We're supposed to have it. Rebuke. The definition of rebuke. An act or expression of criticism or censorship. That's a noun verb. The verb, censor, to censor severely or angrily. Huh. The Lord, not, not enough Christians are angry. I'm telling you that right now. With the things that are going on in this world, you should be angry. And it is righteous. Don't tell me that it ain't righteous anger. Because the Bible tells us to be angry and sin not. We're supposed to be angry. But we ain't got to sin because we're angry. But we do have to act. Come on. Jesus was without sin. We know that. Jesus was without sin. He turned over the tables and whipped people out of the sanctuary. But yet he was without sin. Huh. Think on that. Next time somebody want to judge you as a Christian when you rebuke sharply. And you come against people the way you should. Confrontation is not bad. Confrontation does not mean argumentative. You have to confront things that are wrong. I mean, come on, the people, the homosexuals are confronting what they think is wrong. You have to confront what we know by truth is wrong. And then we're going to go down to why we rebuked him sharply. Let me go down with sharply. He had me break down the definition of a sharply. To rebuke sharply, he said. Definition of sharply. In well delineated manner. I hope I said that word correctly. Changing suddenly in direction and degree. In an aggressive manner. Very suddenly. And to great degree. Quickly. Quickly rebuke. He says rebuke sharply. These people rebuke sharply. Why did he tell you to rebuke them sharply? That they may know sound, that they may be sound in faith. So this tells you that when you rebuke people, you can correct people. Let me break down. Hmm. <laughs> I'm going to read Titus uh, verse, uh, chapter 1, verse 9 first. Holding fast to the faithful word as he hath been taught, that he may be able to be sound, that he may be able by sound doctrine both to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. He tells us to rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in doctrine. And then why they need to be sound in doctrine is that they may be able to exhort and to convince the gainsayers. Gainsayers are people that come against you. We need to be sound in doctrine so that we can rebuke and come against those who are going to try to come against us and we're going to show them to be in the wrong. We're going to shut those mouths. The definition of sound, this was something to me. That they may be sound in doctrine, free from moral defect. To be sound in doctrine is to be thorough. To be sound in doctrine is to exercise or show good judgment. Hmm. To be sound in doctrine reflects weight of sound or evidence. Or, well, or shall I say it reflects weight of sound argument or evidence. It reflects weight of sound argument or evidence. Boy. Sound to be deeply, deeply or completely, deeply and complete <laughs> sound doctrine in good condition, free from defect, damage or decay. That's a whole nother thing there. Grace and truth came by Jesus. Note this to turn from the truth is to turn from Christ. Note this, rebuke restores. Note this, there is righteous angry. The Bible says, be ye angry and sin not. Jesus showed plenty of anger against people who perverted the gospel. People who tried to trick and oppress others. He never rebuked anybody sharply but the Pharisees who want to put yokes on other people's necks that they couldn't even bear. They wanted people to get circumcised and so they could glory in their flesh, yet they didn't do none of these things. They put things, the whole law on people, yet they didn't do the whole law. He called them vipers. It's evil. And you are supposed to be angry against it. What the Bible says about these people, he said, though they profess to know God, they do not. Titus chapter 1 verse 15 and 16 Unto the pure all things are pure, but unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure, 
but even their mind and conscience is defiled. He said their mind and their conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work they are reprobates. They are reprobates against every good work, which means they are against. They have deep hatred against good works, which is why Christians and people who do right are so attacked. They are haters of good, haters of good things. They are abominable. They are reprobate. And they don't know God. If they're doing this, they don't know him. They're causing people to stumble. They of the circumcision, trying to bring you back under the law. By bringing you back under the law, they're bringing you back to bondage. Now I'm going to read you the scripture that on all these two things hang the law and the prophet. Matthew 22, verse 37 through 40. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. As I explained earlier, Jesus fulfilled the all literally and totally. No one could but him. So that he could bring us on to reconcile us to Christ by laying down his life for us. Now all we have to do is these two things. And by doing those two things, we fulfill the whole law. The law isn't obsolete. It has been fulfilled through Jesus. He said not one jot of tittle should pass, but before, all of it has to be fulfilled. Jesus fulfilled it. He took it on for us as us. And all we have to do is have faith in him and love one another and love the Lord God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and look to him. And by doing that, we also have been accounted as fulfilling all the law. And you have people that keep putting his Ten Commandments in your face. Yes, it's good. But you've got to understand what it's good for. It's a schoolmaster to bring people to the new covenant because they got to realize they can't fulfill it. And I said again, it's not just 10, it's 613. It says the law written in stone, and then you got the law, the rest of it is written on scrolls. The people who are teaching this and put these jokes on people's neck, that is not sound doctrine. We have to rebuke them sharply, because they, as the Bible tells us, they are subverting whole houses. And we cannot allow them to do that. Time is too short. I want y'all to understand some things. There's things going on around us that those with spiritual eyes can see. But we can't tell everybody because they're not going to believe. So what we have to do is pray and stand in the gap and slowly share messages and pray that people in their pride won't keep them from clicking on it or being called crazy. Who cares? Crazy like a fox. Y'all going to see when this stuff start hitting. Some of the stuff that you can see going on, so many people are going to not be prepared for and it breaks my heart because people are going to perish. Like I said, it's another thing to die because we're going to pass to Jesus. But if you perish, you're out of his presence. That's why the Bible says he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should repent and come into the knowledge of the truth. We've got to start telling people the truth. We've got to start rebuking people sharply. When you catch somebody with a twisted mouth, perverting and oppressing other people, you move by the spirit and you use scripture and you rebuke them sharply, aggressively, angrily, but with word. You rebuke them because I can promise you those who are the Lord's, it will correct them. Those who are not, they're going to walk away. And the Bible says those who are with the Christ, the scriptures tell us if they were with us, they would have remained with us. Those who leave were never his. We are able to withstand attack. We have been fortified in Christ Jesus. Y'all can believe that. We will be held responsible for our omission. You can't stand idly by and be neutral. So in the name of Jesus, I pray bold utterance up on the body of Christ. Father God, I pray that you open doors of bold utterance and that the children of God walk through it boldly and confidently, boldly and confidently in you. Because who can stand against us when you're for us? Children of God, it's time to start speaking out against what's, against what's going on. It's time to hit the streets. It's time to come against the things that are contrary to God while praying. You do it in love, but you cannot be silent. Nor do we want to take people back to the law. If you don't understand this grace message and the power of the totality of what Jesus has done, study Ask the Lord to reveal it to you. Start finding messages on this grace and the blood and all that he has covered, that he has died once for us, as us, for all time. He was forsaken so that we would never be left. 
And you have some people that think he was not forsaken. But yet the scripture says, he says, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. God, my God, my God, why did you forsake me? Because he was forsaken at that moment, which means just to be totally left so that we wouldn't have to be. And if you understand, that was the only time he ever called him God. Think about that. Throughout the scripture, he always referred to him as father. And at that moment, he called him God. Ponder that and ask the Lord for revelation. I'm going to conclude this message. Again, this message was called the unruly, the vain talking, deceiving teachers whose mouths must be stopped. And how can they be stopped? Because those of us who are in Christ by the spirit can rebuke sharply by the word of God and boldly. And signs and wonders will follow us when we do that. God bless you. And I hope you stay tuned for the messages that are to come. Thank you for joining us today on Preach, Be a Voice, Not an Echo. We pray that you were encouraged and empowered by today's message. Until next time, we encourage you to hang on to God's unchanging hand and preach. Grace be with you. We preach, we preach. we're anointed. anointed, we preach, we preach. we're appointed. So we preach, so go. We preach, we preach. we're anointed. anointed. We, preach. we preach, we're appointed. appointed. Oh, it doesn't matter what you heard. Our Lord and Savior gave his word. So we preach, so go. We preach, we preach. we're anointed. We preach. we preach, we're appointed. appointed. Oh, it doesn't matter what you heard. Our Lord and Savior gave his word. So we preach. Ooh. We preach. So go, so go. We're appointed. appointed. Oh, it doesn't matter what you heard. Our Lord and Savior gave His word. So we preach. So go. Hey, listen up. Those ways to hear. The time has come for the end is near. There's many people who still don't know. Our great commission is that we must go. He qualified us. He made us teach us. How can they live without his preachers? We have a mind and he gave us his wisdom. We are his body and now it's his kingdom. We preach. We preach. We're anointed. anointed. We preach. We preach. We're appointed. appointed. Oh, it doesn't matter what you heard. Our Lord and Savior gave, gave his, his word. word. So we preach. So go. No man knows the day or neither the time. But he gave us warnings and heavenly signs. Open up your mind and surrender your heart. heart. Just trust in Jesus. Impressed to the mark. So gird up family and prepare for this race. race. The world must know that they've been saved by grace. Here is wisdom that your spirit discern. All things not reborn in Christ will surely burn. We preach. We preach. We're anointed. anointed. We preach. We preach. We're appointed. appointed. Oh, it doesn't matter what you heard. Our Lord and Savior gave His word. We preach. So go. We move in word and we move in power. There's 